Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created these scales that I use for this render. Now you can use these for like dragon scales, lizard scales, or any sort of visualization you want. And they're done by having a ring of scales that is cloned onto a spline. So once you have that initial ring set up, you can clone it onto any sort of spline you want. I used a helix for this one. But yeah, I'm going to show you how I did this. So let's jump into it. So first of all, we want to come up and create a rectangle spline and this is going to be the outline of our scale so if we make the width 50 and the height 100 and then the top of these scales will round it out so if i come in to my rectangle and make it editable and then grab the top two points right click and go chamfer and then click and drag we're going to round out the top of this scale now you can see these scales are not uniform they have some movement going on the edge of them so I actually displaced them but this rectangle needs some geometry to displace in the first place and I'm going to do that by adding a loft so if we drag our rectangle into this loft you can see it's made geometry but the points are connecting in such a way that once you displace this it would just look horrible basically so I'm going to come back into my rectangle and change my point value to uniform so it's going to try and spread these polygons out and then back in my loft, right at the bottom where it says type, I'm going to change this to quads and then turn on regular grid. And this is going to try and make a grid within this surface. Now the width underneath is how big our polygons are. So the smaller this is, the more polygons we have. So I'm going to go down to five centimeters because that looks pretty good. Awesome. So like I said, originally I'm going to be using cloners to this. So I need to clone this onto something but I'm um, first of all I'm going to create a line of scales that we can use so if I go up to my MoGraph cloner and then drag my loft into this cloner and then I'm going to come into the movement and get rid of any movement there is and there's a reason for this is I'm going to use what I have sat here called the pile up effect and this is going to basically spread these clones out so they're not touching each other and they never can overlap with each other so it becomes really easy to use them. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can download this. It's free. Just drop it into your scene and then under effectors in your cloner, drag it in. And you can see now it's done absolutely nothing. It's because the pileup effector doesn't understand what a loft is. So I'm going to drag my loft out and I just need to make this editable. So press C on it and get rid of my face tool. I don't need that. So dragging this back in our cloner, you can see it spread them out now. And if yours doesn't look like this, you want to make sure that your axis is on the X axis. So I think the default is Y, but you want it on the X axis and it's going to spread these clones out nicely. Okay, so these clones are looking at pretty uniform at the moment. So clicking on my cloner and come up to MoGraph at the top and then effectors, I'm going to drop a random effector in. And then in our random effector, I'm going to get rid of position and just add scale. And I want it in the x-axis so that we get some fatter scales and some thinner scales. So I'm going to say 2. That's probably a little too much. Let's go 1.5 and we get some nice difference in scales. Now, you remember me just saying the pileup effector would stop these overlapping. And what are they doing? They're overlapping. So the reason this is happening is because if we go into our effectors in our cloner, we have a hierarchy going on here. And it's basically telling it to apply the pileup and then apply the random effect afterwards. So if we tell it to apply the random effector first, so we drag it to the top and then the pile up, it will fix this. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just create some more clones. Let's go, let's go 10 clones. And you want to go ahead and find a seed that you like. I don't really like having them that small. We've got one really tiny one here. Maybe we just go back into our cloner, into our uh, random effector, and just change with the parameters a little bit. Find something we like the look of. I'm going to turn on absolute scale and go 1.5. And that's looking pretty good maybe two yeah two looks pretty good awesome 
So these scales are all looking slightly different now, but they're all very uniform, as in how flat they are. They're basically very thin. So I actually want to apply a displacer to this. Remember, we added geometry to this so we could actually displace it. So if I come and grab a displacer at the top, and drag this underneath my loft, and then go into my shading and say noise, it's going to make these go crazy. But I actually just want the tips of these scales to be displaced, not the whole thing. So if I come into my displacer and create a fall off and then go linear field, and I've changed this to Y plus, so it's on the right field, and then just turn the strength of this down, you can see it starts to only affect the top of them. Now I can come in and move this up slightly, and you can start to see and the top of these are affected. Yep, pretty happy with that. But they're being affected on every axis. I'm going to turn off, I'm going to uh, hide my linear field so it doesn't get cluttered. I'm actually getting moves on every axis, and I actually just want the tops of these. It's like little bumps going on. So I'm going to go back into my displacer and under, uh, under object and direction. I'm just going to choose planner and then we need to find the right orientation so plus y is plus y awesome i'm just going to go in and change my noise slightly it's maybe a little too small so it's got 180 and now we have these bumps going on on the top of our on the top of our clone Awesome, very good. So these clones are very flat at the moment. They don't have any width to them. And there's a few ways of adding this, but we're left with a few issues again, because if we put this, say, if we did this by using a cloth tool up here, if I use a cloth surface, our pileup wouldn't understand the cloth surface. Again, this is one of the issues with pileup, but there's ways around this, and I'm simply just going to come into my loft. If I turn off my cloner, I'm going to come into my loft, grab my polygons, go Control A to grab them all, right click, and go extrude, and make sure you have preserve groups and create caps on. And I'm just going to extrude this by three centimeters. And now turning our cloner back on, we now have some width to these scales. The point being is you can't do this um, using an effector. You have to do it by hand, basically. Otherwise, the pileup won't recognize it. Awesome. So the next step is we want to clone this onto a circle. Now, this is where our hierarchy of objects becomes very important because we need to tell what to affect what and what's included and what effector. You get what I mean? Um, so if we come up to our effectors and grab a spline wrap, and I'm just going to hide this spline wrap. Actually, no, I'm going to keep it keep it there for a second just so I can show you what's going on. So we need to we need to tell our spline wrap what to what to grab. What do we want to wrap around another object? So we want it to affect our cloner. But how do we do this? We basically need to put these two in a null object. So I click on both of them and Alt G. So now everything in this null is being affected by the spline wrap. You can see this purple outline means we have actually grabbed this object. Awesome. But then we need to tell this what to wrap onto. So let's go up and grab a circle. And we're going to change the orientation of this circle. So it's on its sides, XZ, and then in our spline wrap, we can drag this circle into the spline. And you can see we have scales. Awesome. Now this is actually upside down at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this round. Awesome. So we have some scales. I'm going to hide my spline wrap again. And I'm just going to keep track of everything. So I'm going to rename this circle um, 
small circle. Actually, I'm going to read them to scale circle. That makes sense. Awesome. So now we need to tell this circle to be spline wrapped or cloned onto another circle. <laughs> This is where it starts to get even more confusing, okay? Hopefully you guys can follow along and hopefully I explain this in a way that's helpful. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. 100% will get back to you. So, what do I want to do this on? I'm going to do this on a... I'm going to grab an arc. And I'm just going to make this arc bigger. Awesome. So if we grab a cloner again, and if we drag this null into our cloner and tell this cloner to clone on an object, and then grab our arc and drag it in this object, you can see it's not doing anything. And you can see my PC is lagging a bit. I'm going to come in and change my clones to render instances under here, instance mode, render instance. And it's kind of started to do something, but it's not quite right because you can see where our clones are meant to be on this, on these points here. You can even see it's telling it that it's creating a clone because you can see these little white dots, but it's not actually doing it properly. And there is an issue with this, and it's our hierarchy. So, how do we want to do this? It's because we need this original circle to be in the hierarchy. It needs to be included in the cloner. But if we drag this in here, you can see now the spline wraps being affect affecting this circle. So that's not correct. Let's drag it back out. So how do I want to do this? So we have our null. And I'm actually going to put this in another null and then drag our circle in between these two nulls. So now it's in the hierarchy, but it's not affected by the spline wrap. So then if I drag this null into our cloner, you can see it's now cloning it actually on the spline. Awesome. Now, we just need to transform this and rotate this to find the right orientation. So in our Y axis, I'm going to make this minus 90. pump these clones up a bit. So I'll count up, just add some more clones. And now we have an arc with all these clones on it. But the issue is they're all overlapping with each other. If you go back to this, we can see they're actually pointing out slightly. And the way I'm going to do this is by going back to our original cloner and then transforming and then we can just on our Y axis tell our cloners to point outwards slightly. And you can see they don't overlap anymore. And it's starting to look really cool. So our next issue is this all looks very uniform. All these clones actually line up with each other. And we don't want that. We want it to look a lot more random, obviously. So if I come up to this cloner, and I'm gonna actually go back to my original random, and this I'm gonna call this rid, uh, original clone uh, random. And then I'm gonna come up to my new cloner and create another random. And I'm going to name this. Uh, I'm going to name this arc random. So this is the random effector for our new clone. And again, come into parameters, and I'm going to get rid of my position. And all we want to do is change our rotation, and then we find the right axis for it, which is our x-axis. And we can change the rotation. You can see the scales are moving around now. And they no longer line up. So I'm going to do 360. 
and you can see we have these scales that no longer line up. They don't look as uniform and they're starting to look pretty good. So now I can come into my original cloner right back at the start. Remember, this is the one right at the bottom of the hierarchy and maybe we just increase the count so we get more scales or less scales. Really depends what you, sort of look you're going for. Go 25 there. And also you can come in and change your original object. So maybe I don't like my scales being as tall. So maybe I just make my scale a bit shorter. And it makes these scales a bit shorter. And then I'm gonna pump more clones in to my second clone right at the top of the hierarchy. Pump some more clones in. There you have it, we have scales. And like I say, now that you've got this original setup done, you can change whatever like you're cloning this into. So I have this arc here. Say I just, I go and grab a helix, uh, make this a helix bigger. I actually want now, I want to clone this onto my helix instead. I just grab and drag this in and we have it cloning onto the helix now you just have to increase the clones like so and this is how i actually did that render i did it on a helix so that's how i achieved the scales thank you very much for watching obviously you could change the scales however you want uh, when you come back to this original object you could make the square you can make the triangle however you want, like round it out, add some subdivisions to this, get a look you really like. So I really hope that was helpful. And this is really cool way of doing scales. Thank you very much for watching.